Hey, what's up YouTube? So today's video is going to be on installing a barn door. Um, right now I got my rough opening. Depending on your setup, one thing whether it's going to be a double door like this or just a single um, interior door is to calculate your opening. Typically you want to have at least an inch overhang on each side, two to three inches taller. Um, if it's for like a bathroom, you may want to go two inches um, over each side of your finished opening. That measurement is gonna be taken from the inside of your jam, the ID of your jam when you finish it out. So like my door right here, gonna be my barn door, there's gonna be two. Um, typically barn, like if you actually buy a barn door, they'll be taller than a standard interior 6-8 door. So yeah, that's seven foot versus six eight so you can see um, I got plenty there also one consideration is how much room you have depending on what hardware you buy um, above uh, that's something to keep in mind because that you could have clearance issues up here um, also when you're laying out and trying to design this how far your track can go um, also any obstructions on the wall like light switches that you'll cover up here, what's gonna happen is these doors are both gonna open and hang on the sides, which I'm all right, because my doors are 26. Figuring out my opening, since both my doors are 26 inches, I'm gonna take an inch off my doors, because I want an inch overhang. So that's 25, so the inside of my um, jams need to be set at 50 inches. For these out, so the inside of my jam, my jam's 5 eighths. Now, if you, single interior door like a standard doorway um, there are barn kits i've used before from like gelled wind that are have a almost a flange that goes on the top and bottom that gives you extra to make your door you can still use a standard interior slab door um, six eight door for like a barn door style setup i've used those before they work pretty good um, the gelled wind i picked up at home depot it actually had a soft close feature which was very nice um, also the attachments you put on the top and bottom are like a black um, powder coated look but essentially they would go the whole way to give you your extra height there'd be a piece you would mount to the top of your door that'd give you so much um, one kind of cool thing about that system is it also comes with a uh, stopper that gelled wind kit that you'd put in your floor and on that track you put on the bottom it's almost like already giving you your mortise. So that way you'll see on some barn doors, you know, people don't put anything in the floor, like a track for them to go against. They'll veer out. Um, so that gelled wind system was nice, not only for the soft close, but for the um, kind of the door stop that went on the bottom. It's almost acts as a track. Um, whether, whatever you do, I would recommend something on the floor, whether that's a little piece of, you know, like angle, that kind of guides the bottom of the door so it can't come out or some people will mortise on the bottom of the door they'll take their router and mortise something and put like a dowel on the floor or anything there just to keep keep your door from when it's moving that it can't kick way out um the soft close feature of that gelled wind kit was very nice you know you could push the door almost like a cabinet and then it'll totally open grab the handle to close it and it would you know take it right to center and stop. So now we're gonna continue with kind of laying out our opening. I'll show you how to go about that. And so this kit, my barn door kit came from uh, Menards. Since I have two doors, I'm gonna need two sets. This is called the Colonial Elegance Barn All-in-One Kit. Um, so obviously it's gonna come with your rollers, your track. Uh, since I'm having two doors, basically the flat piece of iron at the top they sell a connector to join your two pieces together to give you one long track. So that's this little piece where you can see you connect your two pieces of flat bar. Comes with your instructions. Pretty self-explanatory. So like on this kit, it says from the height of your from the floor, add an inch and three quarter to the height of your door being installed to determine the center height of the rail. And if it's not installed level. Date, the door obviously may slide, and it's just hanging there. So all these barn doors are pretty similar. So we'll go about laying out our opening and getting our jam installed first. Okay, so when you're prepping your opening, 
What I like to do is put a control line, which you take your long level, you could use a laser. You hold your um, level, an arbitrary height, you know, just where it's comfortable, where you can see your vial. You get it level, you strike each side of the drywall. And then what I like to do is transfer you know, I scribed here, I'll transfer to the inside of the jam each way. And then I'm measuring off the hard floor, measure up from the floor. And I got 49 and 7 8. And here I got 50 on the left side. So what that means is your lower number is your higher floor. Um, it's kind of, that's my high point is the lower number. So then, what I need to figure out is on my side here. So that basically means this side's my high side. To level out my head jam, I'll have to take the difference off the bottom. So on my right side, my high side, another thing I need to figure out, which I did not frame this opening, is for my jam material, what my inside measurement is to my header. And I have 81 and a quarter. So this will be my full side. And then whatever I have to do on this side to cut it down to get it level. Now this isn't critical, but it's something, it's a good practice to always do. Like when you're doing a barn door, um, you probably wouldn't even notice if you were a little bit out of level, but it's just good to get in the habit of always kind of having a system. So now I'm gonna go cut my jam down um, and show you how to go about that. Okay, so here's my jam. Remember I had 81 and a quarter. So I'm pulling off the very top edge. It'll be in that opening. Make my mark. So there's the left side. I'm pulling off the very top. And I'm taking an extra eighth. 50 and 5 eighths. Go put together that jam. I'll shoot it with my 15 gauge nailer, glue it. And also I like to run some little uh, cabinet screws in the end. So I'm using tight bond too. And I'll pin it with my 15 gauge nailer. Like I said, I'm using little GRKs. Now you could just build this in place, pre-assemble and then just shim it. I think it's easier than trying to keep holding the tape up. Once I get this built, I can pressurize the head jam and then just make sure I'm plumb going down. So measuring off the top of my jam, <clears throat> I got 51 and a quarter is what I need in my opening. So I have, whenever I'm hanging doors, I have a box of uh, scrap sheet goods that I cut down to three and a half by three and a half. That allows you to make gross adjustments. So that's what I'm doing here. It's so now directly across from the head jam. Get it tight. So there it's pressurized, it's gonna stay put. Double check for level. So I got my top set on this side, now I'm gonna set the bottom. And as you go along, make sure your drywall planes out before you attach your jam. Make sure it planes out. Now since the top and bottom are set, I just need to make sure this planes out. So it looks like right about in here, there's kind of a bow. So now what I'm doing is opening my door where it's open on the left side, making a reference mark on the wall, doing it on the right. Um, that way I know how much track I need, bare minimum, to open. Um, so I did that on each side. I also marked a center line for just reference, the center of my opening. Um, what I'm gonna do is see I have a header and then I'm gonna locate my studs and kind of just play with the um, my flat bar track to see where it's gonna work out best to um, not only hit, obviously it'll be easy in my opening to hit my header, but then as far out I go to hit. So most uh, barn door hardware will have um, 16 on center holds for your uh, legs. Basically I use a stud finder, lay out my track, how it's gonna work both with the opening of my doors, which I marked on the wall. So like my track here, um, that's where my doors gotta end. So I'm, I gotta, that should be plenty because your door can hang out past the track then i laid it out made sure um everything was going to work basically i only have to change one location 
where I'll take my metal drill bits and drill out a hole, um, cut it off over here because I don't need all that. Uh, so basically just take your time. If you have to move some holes in the track, or like I said, you could tack up a board if you want to go that route. If you're designing it and going to be in the framing stage, run a header and blocking the whole way so you have something solid to attach to. It makes this a lot easier. That's just something in hindsight. Um, if you're doing your own framing, that way it makes your life so much easier, kind of like when you're doing cabinets, um, to do all that. But Okay, so I wanted to get this up before I continued on with my layout I had going. So I want to get my door up to make sure with how the stop worked that I could get this up and I didn't need to bring my rail any further over. I'll kind of show you for each situation. Again, this is for my kit, but these are the door stops. They catch the door. Um, I decided to center rollers in the center of the styles, and I calculated that that would give me my reveal where I could open my door. And you can see it clears the whole way. I also wanted to see the thickness of my casing, which with the baseboard, the casing is going to clear fine. Um, so you can see I set my door stop. That was my main area of contention um, that we'd still be good. Now, basically, what I have to decide, and you can see I got my connector on, that needs adjusted. Um, So I got my rail set up all the way across the top. Um, when you're going along, if you take your speed square and set on your line and make sure you're not you know, tweaking your screws because it's hanging out from the wall. So any deviance will really change your track. And then what I would do at the end is get up and sight your track from the wall and kind of adjust them in and out um, depending on how flat your wall is too. If you know you're coming behind a bad drywaller, it might be a little tricky. You might have to shim a few of them. Um, it's so critical to have your track level because you know if you go to open your door and you want to have it hang open like that right there, if it's not level, it'll just keep running, you know. So what you can do, like here, I can put my stop right here, catch it and hold it. Because obviously having it more than open, there's no real point. Um, and that just happens because I was having some trouble getting them those legs in perfectly aligned. But like on there, that's where you did on the left side, you'll see. So right now I'm hitting my stop. It's perfectly open. I did an inch overhang. There's my mark. Mount this hardware, the decision you'll have to make is I centered it on my style. So that way it would be more aesthetically pleasing since we're working with tight margins. After I figured out the door stop hung on the end, um, that would give me the greatest uh, projection past my door. So now I'll show you, I gotta cut this off quick. So per the instructions on this door, you come down five and an eighth from the top of the door and then mark the center. And my uh, style is four inches, so I come in at two and then I'm drilling a pilot hole. The nut goes on the front, hand tighten. Square it up off the top of your door. Tightened up, just use your square to keep it um, true. So once you get your doors hung up, everything done, you might have to do some uh, minor adjusting to get them, um, get your reveals right to have them touch. Uh, I laid it out like how it said in the direction, squaring off the door. Uh, my track is perfectly level, but for some reason I had a nice gap at the bottom. So basically what I did is take my, took my drill bit and essentially wallered out the tops of the holes that could bring each edge down and, you know, not 
I marked where it originally was, so I knew how much I had to gain, and I would say maybe 3 16ths of an inch on each side, and that closes it up nicely. So you can see, now what I'm gonna do is, it comes with some anti-jump stops for the top that uh, I'll attach, and then it looks like a floor guide, and then I just gotta case out this opening. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video, got something useful out of it. Uh, please go to Meyer Construction, hit like, hit subscribe, and keep hammering.